What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. We're going to look at uh, Rep Paladin, finally. It's been a little while. I don't know why I didn't get to this earlier, but I've just been busy with a lot of stuff. But we're going to look at Rep Paladin in the War Within in a Mythic Plus dungeon. And I did try the Templar build. I think I'll do another one as Herald of the Sun after, but I wanted to try Templar and give it a real shot in Mythic Plus. And, I mean... I don't think it's any secret that uh, Rep Paladin is in a fantastic position, and the TLDR is, um, I don't know that you're going to have a really difficult time as a Rep Paladin, period. Even, like, your single target damage gets shored up a little bit, excuse me, by having Hammer of Light. Um, it's just a super strong cooldown in general. If you don't know how Templar works, um, your, your Wake of Ashes, when you press it, your, it becomes Hammer of Light. So if I press it right now... You can see it becomes this right here. Now, I still have to build up two more Holy Power before I can spend it. And then um, it will do a whole bunch of damage. And then once I've cast <clears throat> Hammer of Light, I start calling down hammers that just fall on my enemies. And that's called Shake the Heavens. And after Azure Cast Hammer Liver, you call down Empyrean Hammers. So there's all kinds of other ways to continuously call down Empyrean Hammers. Like, for example, if you press Crusader Strike or Hammer of Wrath, or Blade of Justice, they extend the duration of Shake the Heavens so that more hammers keep falling on enemies. These are individual hammers, of course, but each one of those hammers also does splash damage when they critically strike to nearby enemies. So you are getting AOE, uh, single target and splash damage going on there as well. And then, of course, um, <clears throat> as you're fighting in combat, you start building up these stacks of Light's Deliverance, and then you eventually get a free proc on Hammer of Light. So... You always get a proc from Wake of Ashes, and then you get a free proc every so often um, as you're stacking up Blaze Deliverance. So it's really strong. Also, this defensive note is so incredibly good, and I don't understand. I just don't understand the disparity in some of the class design sometimes. Like, it just doesn't make any sense at all. Like, why does, you know, Stormbringer Shaman, for example, not have a node like this? This is insane. When you press Wake of Ashes, you get a barrier worth 20% of your max HP. And then Hammer of Light will also heal you afterwards. Like, look at the healing this did overall. This did 6 million healing over the course of the dungeon. It's just... Anyway, I'm not mad for Paladin. I'm mad about it not being the case for other specs. But this is really, really strong. Um, yeah, here's the build that I ran. I did end up trying um, Divine Hammer, which is a brand new thing. They're, they're kind of they're kind of not reintroducing, but introducing in earnest in the War Within. It replaces Consecration. It essentially is a Rep Paladin Breath of Sindragosa, which is what uh, Frosty Case have. These hammers spin around you and they drain your Holy Power, and you have to fight the draining of the Holy Power by pressing Holy Power Builders, and it's really fun. I actually love the little gameplay loop. The draining of the holy power gradually gets faster, so you're you're very limited in how long you can do this for. I would say roughly 10 seconds is what you're aiming to keep this up for. And then the holy power drain just gets way too fast, and you end up um, not being able to do it anymore. But I kind of made a build around this a little bit. And if, and if you take Divine Hammer and you also take Burning Crusade, that makes Divine Hammer do radiant damage whenever it procs damage. And that ends up procking a lot of searing light damage, because... Radiant damage procs Searing Light. And what, the other thing that procs Radiant or damage and Searing Light, of course, is Templar Strikes. And when you're in your Divine Hammer cooldown, you have to be pressing Templar Strike, Templar Strike, Judgment, Blade of Wrath, D Judgment, Templar Strike. All you're doing is pressing your Holy Power Builders because you're draining your Holy Power every second. So it's really cool where you can combine all three of these and then... Not only are you getting lots of damage from Divine Hammers, but you're proccing the Searing Light damage down here as well, which is really good. So um, let's look at the dungeon, and then we'll look at the overall after that. I have it right here. We'll look at the um, overall afterwards. We had an opening pack here. The opening pack was a little bit messy. I actually missed my, my Divine Hammer. This is something I want to make sure I show you guys. So I pressed Wake of Ashes. You can see my... Divine Hammer thing is, or my um, Hammer of Light is lit up here, ready to go. So I build some more Holy Power. Now I have five Holy Power. It costs five Holy Power. So I'm about to press it on this guy right here. And then he leaps away from me. So I press it. And then he leaps mid-cast. So I actually don't even get the damage out of that. And that's something I want you guys to understand, is that if you, um, <clears throat> if you like, 
press this ability, it, it sort of has a bit of a wind up. It's like a half second kind of wind up channel sort of thing. And if you mess that up, you're not going to do any damage. So uh, you got to be really careful about that. Our healer ended up DCing. We got him back. It's all good. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, there's interesting little quirkiness there to the ability. You got to make sure that you are careful about um, not casting on the wrong enemy. I want to just highlight the healing that I can do for a second here. So I press Divine Hammer. I'm going to get a shield. So I now have a shield up here. Okay. I start getting auto attack. I'm doing 125k HPS right now. And then I pop my other shield, my shield of vengeance. And then boom, now I'm doing 200k HPS. Because it immediately got consumed. And I'm still alive somehow. We were out healing the healer there. Like the sustain you have... Not only with your own shield of vengeance and your own self healing, if you wanted to do like a lay on hands or something, but now you also have crazy sustain when you press wake of ashes, which is just so stupid. Okay. <clears throat> I pressed divine hammers. You can see them spinning around me. They're very small. I pressed divine hammers. Now I'm going to press my holy power builder. So that's my crusading strike and my judgment. I can press wake of ashes as well, but if I press wake of ashes, then it's going to give me holy power, and then I'm going to want to press... I have a very limited amount of time to press uh, Hammer of Light. So you basically don't really want to press Wake of Ashes when you're doing the Divine Hammer combo. You can see my holy power disappearing every second there. And I'm trying to I'm trying to fight it, and now we're done. Now I can press my Divine Hammer, but now it runs out. So a bit of a balancing act here. If you are going to take... The, the Divine Hammers. I might just keep saying the same thing. Hammer of Light is what this ability is. If you're going to take Divine Hammers and you're going to have Hammer of Light, you need to make sure that you can actually cast your um, Hammer of Light maybe after the Divine Hammers or right before you're about to do it. Um, otherwise, you'll just run out of duration and you'll have wasted an entire proc and you really don't want to do that. So just be careful about that you don't have to run these divine hammers either i just think they're really fun i think it actually gives rat paladin a really fun um ability like a little gameplay mechanic that they can play around with i think that's really really fun and i just i don't know i really enjoy that here's my damage right now 940k i'm about to hit my hammer of light here it comes boom up to 1.2 million we're at 940k we went up to 1.2 million just from pressing that so it is a heavy hitting ability. It hits really hard. It does a lot of damage. It doesn't really take away from your rotation at all. It feels a little bit weird at first when you press, you know, Wake of Ashes to immediately have that ability become a different ability that you have to press again. I understand. It's a little bit weird. You'll get used to it. It's not hard to play around. I promise. And it does a crazy amount of damage. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's just nothing really wrong with Rep Paladin whatsoever. The only thing that is changed for Rep Paladins is that you lost your ridiculous amount of range that you used to have. Now, things like Final Verdict, which is your single target spender, it still has a bunch of built-in range. And Judgment and Blade of Wrath and Hammer of Wrath and Divine Toll, those all have a lot of range as well. Even Wake of Ashes has like an 8-yard range. The only thing that you don't have a lot of range on anymore is your melee and your kick. Those are the only two things that really you just don't have a lot of range on anymore. But honestly, the rest of your abilities, they, they're all like pretty, pretty good. So I don't know. It's a little silly when people complain about melees having lost all their range. Like, except you have a bunch of abilities you can press if you have to like walk outside of melee. I'm not really happy about it overall. I'm just saying I want to be a little bit of a devil's advocate here and say, listen, you have a ton of abilities you can cast from range. You're also just kind of invincible as a rep pally. That's just that's just honestly the way it is. Here's a great example. I have to walk out of melee here because there's puddles all around the bosses. I'm standing on the edge doing my best. Now I have to run around. I just use my mobility to reposition. That's all you got to do. If you can't really stay within range, it's not the end of the world. Um, and again, you can use your ranged abilities if you need to. We're doing double damage here right now. For some reason, my mouse just like flicked over to the left when I was pressing uh, Final Reckoning. And I think I just missed with Final Reckoning. So let's just not talk about that. All right. Let's just not comment about that. I have my divine hammers going right now. So I am just generating resources as much as I can. Watch my holy power here. It's going to go down and then up and then down and then up. I'm going to keep fighting it. Fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. We're fighting it. 
and your damage just climbs because these hammers are going around. They're going ding, 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 ding. It's just, I actually love it. I love a little extra mechanic that you have to play around with uh, Rep Paladin. I'm telling you, Rep Paladin, it's not the most boring spec in the game by any means, but it's sort of just like press the button that's lit up. You know what I mean? That's kind of what you're doing. Here's Empyrean Hammer and Hammer of Light. So these are your, like, Hammer of Light is the ability that you cast yourself. The Empyrean Hammers are the things that come down afterwards, and they're both doing crazy amounts of damage. Our Divine Hammer, which is my things that were spinning around me, those did 8% of my damage there. So very, very good. Um, yeah, super, super good. We get through the maze here, and uh, it's relatively, you know, uneventful. I think that um, it's interesting that the maze forces you to fight these packs of four to five to six mobs. Um, we're going to have to sort of see if that favors other specs in the game versus like uncapped AOE specs. So like, I wonder if Shaman is going to be really valuable in a mists because their damage is generally capped at, at six mobs with their flame shocks. Right. I don't know for us though, like all of our stuff's uncapped basically anyway, it doesn't matter. We're just blasting. Look at the damage here. We're just blasting. It's really good, guys. I'm telling you. Um, it's really, really good. This pack, I did not have Divine Hammer, so I'll have it for the next one. So watch this. We'll get through this door, and then I have Divine Hammers ready to go. So we're going to generate some Holy Power. We're going to get the Divine Hammers spinning, and then we're going to go. I think I try to get my Wake of Ashes out of the way first. So I Wake of Ashes into a Divine Hammer right away. Okay? Or Hammer of Light, sorry. And then I get my Hammers going here in a second. After I almost die, I think I end up dying. Yeah, never mind. I didn't even get a chance to press them. So we'll do it on the next pack, I guess. I thought it was this pack. I do it on this guy. This is a single target fight. I'm going to pop my hammers here just to see how good it, how much damage it gives us on single target. So now I'm generating, generating, generating holy power. I'm pressing my Templar strike. I'm pressing judgment, pressing blade of wrath. You cannot press any of your spenders during this window or you will just lose. And But see how quickly it gradually goes down. Watch how slowly the holy power is going down. And then it'll just go ding, 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 ding. It'll just, it'll just go all the way down really quickly. Super fast. So eventually, it just runs out, and there's no way to prevent yourself from, from that, basically, from stopping that. So there's Divine Hammer right there, 12.2% of my damage. Our Empyrean Hammers, the ones that are falling down for free, are once again just popping, man. They're doing so much damage. One thing that I think is really cool with this whole build I've cooked up is that when you're in your Divine Hammer spinny thing, and you're pressing your Holy Power Generators... Your Holy Power Generators, which is Crusader Strike and Blade of Wrath and Judgment, those extend your hammers that are falling down. So if you have hammers that are falling down because you've recently pressed um, Hammer of Light, you'll extend those and they'll just keep going forever and ever. And you're generating Holy Power, which is keeping your, your hammers spinning, which is also keeping the hammers falling. It's like this really cool combo and it all kind of works together nicely. So um, I really enjoy, yeah, I really enjoy that a lot. And the damage is just, it's ridiculous. The damage is ridiculous. It's so good. Uh, we end up dying a bunch of times to Mistcaller because people just don't know how to do this fight. The tank didn't understand that he could only, he was the only one who could pick, uh, kick Patty Cake. So it's okay. We end up getting through this fight. It is what it is. Um, this is going to be a really tough fight for Pugs, I think. That's okay. It's fine. We're on the beta. People have no idea what they're doing. Not a big deal. Um, down to the worms in the final section. I, I mean, there's nothing else really to say. Our damage is just super good. It's super good. The damage is super good. The survivability is ridiculous. I have two. I had two dots on me for that entire time. Look, at I have a dot on me right now. My health isn't moving. I'm going to get another dot on me in a second. I pop my shield of vengeance. I'm assuming. Do I, I think I pop it here? Maybe I forget. We're just taking damage, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, now I pop it when it's completely irrelevant. Man, that was so bad. Why did I pop it there? That was really bad. I got to work on that. The point is, you basically can't die. Your damage is outrageous. It's really good. We're doing 1.5 million here on these packs. You always have damage on every single pack. That's the really nice thing about um, Rep Paladin. You just, you just always have damage. It's really cool. Every 30 seconds, you get a really good, cool Wake of Ashes. That Wake of Ashes turns into uh, a, a Hammer of Light. That Hammer of Light starts calling down hammers on enemies. And then you just every 30 seconds, you're just blasting people. It feels really, really strong. So, yeah, really enjoy this a lot. I'll skip to the end. We'll do the last boss. And you can see my single target damage on Tradova here. It's kind of single target, kind of AoE once the other mobs get there. 
I was debating when to use my divine tool. I should have just sent it earlier. So our damage is kind of low right now, but it'll pick up steam in a minute here. Here comes wings plus um, final reckoning. Plus we get our divine toll and I have wake of ashes as well. Here comes Empyrean hammer. Boom, boom, boom. Our damage is catching up here. Trying to, trying to get out of those puddles. This is a pretty nasty fight. Somebody got uh, the a demon hunter got parasite on him. So that's unlucky. One thing that's again, really strong about paladin is that if you get the parasite put on you, I'm resing the uh, demon hunter there. If you get the parasite put on you, you can actually just bubble it off, and I'll show you that in a minute. I have my hammers rolling here, so I'm just pressing my generators. Generator after generator, and then it's gone. My uh, my holy power ran out there. I'm getting eaten by a bunch of bugs, I think. Oh, no, that was somebody else. I don't know why I was dying. I didn't get out of that in time. I'm just taking unnecessary damage. I Somebody kicked the parasite, which was good. Here's my next hammer of light. Kaboom! It feels really good when you press it, and it has a good sound effect. I actually really like it a lot. The visuals could be a little bit snappier. I've had people, I've heard people complain about that. And I get that for sure. The visuals could be a little bit better. Here's what's cool. I just use my hammer of light and my procs at the top here are getting close to 60. And then I press my next judgment here and boom, I get another proc on, on hammer of light. So you're going to get this throughout the dungeon where you just get multiple procs per fight. And it's, it's very, very strong that way. I think I managed to stand in the middle of this. Look at this. I stand in the middle of three bubbles here. I have no idea how, but I didn't take any damage. And then the domination is going off, and my kick's on cooldown, because I would just kick consumption a minute ago, or a second ago. So now I'm charmed, I immediately bubble, and then I'm out of the charm. So even if you actually get mind controlled, you can still bubble. And that will break the mind control, which is kind of disgusting, if you ask me, uh, for rep paladins to be able to do that, or paladins in general. But you know what? It's just a paladin thing, just OP, OP. Right, there's our damage overall. I'll just look at it here in because uh, I've got it right here. Did 550,000 overall. That's a respectable number. It's not the 900,000 that some like uh, arcane mages are doing or survival hunters. I know they're probably going to get nerfed. This is beta. Remember, it's beta. The, the numbers are going to change. Let me just tell you, though, from a feeling point of view, it felt amazing to play this. It really enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed both the uh, and the Hammer of Light side of it, where you press Wake of Ashes and you get a big Hammer of Light, and then you have to try and extend your hammers that are coming down. And I also really enjoyed the Divine Hammer part of it, where you get these spinning hammers around you, and you're trying to extend that as well and get that little mini Breath of Syndragosa going on. I really enjoyed both of those things about this build. So here's our breakdown. Empyrean Hammer and uh, is the top part, which is crazy. So these are just the extra hammers that are coming down after you press Hammer of Light. That's how much damage these things do. Absolutely crazy amount of damage. And then Hammer of Light itself, both of these put together is about 24% of our overall damage, which is really, really good, okay? Wake of Ashes, Judgment, Divine Storm, Blade of, Blade of Justice. I always say Blade of Wrath. It's Blade of Justice. That's my bad. <clears throat> Divine Hammers did 4.5% of our damage. To me, that's a good amount of damage for a, for a one talent point. I think it's really great. Again, you don't have to take this. You could just get the free Consecration instead if you want to, or just don't take this talent at all. Just put this talent point somewhere else. And maybe it's got more value somewhere else. I don't know. But I really enjoyed playing the Divine Hammer side of it. And I wanted to show that to you guys. Then we have our Crusader Strikes. Remember we have our Crusading Strike. Or sorry, Templar Strikes. I don't have the passive one. I have the active one. The reason for that, as I said before, is to help uh, trigger our Divine Hammer. To keep that going. And to proc Searing Light. So how much damage did that actually do? On top of the sort of utility that it's providing. Well... Templar Strike, Templar Slash, that's 5.5% of our damage right there. And then there's another Templar Slash dot down here. So it's actually 6.5% six, six of our damage, which puts it way up here, right behind Divine Storm. So if you're wondering, well, Zuko, is it actually worth it to take, you know, these Templar Strikes and to be pressing these? I think it actually is. It's 6.5% of our damage, and it helped extend our Divine Hammers for as long as possible, and it procced a bunch of Searing Light damage as well. So... Very, very good. I think it's a worthwhile talent choice to take there. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That was our Templar Rep Paladin. It does a lot of damage. It's a lot of fun. I think it's a fantastic build. And um, you're going to have no problem with it at all if you take it into the, into the War Within. Your defensives are ridiculous. You're stronger than you've ever been before. I'm telling you, it's just crazy. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much again for watching. Love you all. I'll see you in the next one.